Vegas, baby, Vegas! Hello, YouTube. Film Buff 06 here. Coming your way with a review of the 1996 independent comedy drama movie Swingers, which was only the second feature film to be directed by Doug Lyman, who would later go on to direct the likes of Go, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Jumper, the Edge of Tomorrow, and especially The Born Identity. And it stars John Favreau, who not only helped to co-produce the film, but also wrote the screenplay himself, which he loosely based on his own experiences during his first move to Los Angeles. Uh, Vince Vaughn, before he essentially went on to suck as an actor, in my opinion. Uh, Ron Livingston, who had previously been well known for his role in Office Space, and later went on after this film to appear as Captain Lewis Nixon in Band of Brothers. And Heather Graham, who at the time was one of the biggest Hollywood superstars of the late 1990s and early 2000s, with roles in movies such as Boogie Nights, Scream 2, Lost in Space, The Guru, alongside Jimmy Mystery, Anger Management, alongside Adam Sandler, Jack Nicholson and Marissa Tomei, uh, From Hell, alongside Johnny Depp. Uh, Bowfinger, alongside Steve Martin and Eddie Murphy. And especially alongside Mike Myers as the love interest in Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me. Now, Swingers not only helped to kickstart Favreau, Vaughton and Livingston's respective fledgling careers as Hollywood, as Hollywood megastars, but also helped to launch Lyman's directing career by winning him an MTV Movie Award for Best New Filmmaker. Now, the basic story of this film is almost like a male version of Sex in the City and is about a struggling actor and comedian named Mike, played by John Favreau, who is trying to get over a breakup with his girlfriend of six years in an attempt to cheer him up and get him laid, his best friend Trent, played by Vince Vaughn, and a bunch of other friends, take him on a typical lad's night out to every backstreet Hollywood bar and dance club within Las Vegas and Los Angeles, where they get drunk, play video games, play golf, discuss movie trivia, chat up other women with varying degrees of success, etc, etc, etc. Now, now when asked to approve the use of the iconic theme music for Jaws during a particular scene in the film, Steven Spielberg himself saw some footage of Vince Vaughn in this film and instantly hired him on the spot. 
fit for a role alongside the likes of Jeff Goldblum and Julianne Moore in Jurassic Park 2, The Lost World. Yeah. So, since I'm almost around the same age as the main characters in the movie, what are my thoughts on Swingers after seeing it for the first time, not from when it was shown on BBC One last Friday, as I originally intended to, to watch it, but actually from Netflix. Well, I wouldn't really say it's a great movie, nor would I say it's really the best comedy I've ever seen. Um, some of the jokes, I have to admit, made me, you know, chuckle more than um, laugh out loud because of because of really how dated they seem to be at times. But really, the best way for me to describe Swingers is that it is a really good, really entertaining, and really funny time capsule that perfectly captures you know, what nightlife in Los Angeles and the short-lived swing revival of the late 90s was like. However, I do think it is a tad overrated. Just a tad overrated. Although I could clearly see, although of course I could clearly see why it deserves its status as a cult classic among, you know, 20 something young guys like myself. Now, now I could imagine this film being really relatable at the time to people who not only wanted to go into the entertainment industry, but also were looking for relationships of their own after going through, um, after going through, you know, a breakup. You know, some people criticise this film for not having that much of a plot. Which is true, but does it matter? No, not really, because what there is of one, because if so, what there is of one is executed brilliantly thanks to a fantastically witty script from John Favreau that features some truly memorable dialogue, some of which have become some of the most quotable and iconic and iconic in movie history, like Vegas, baby, Vegas. You're so money and you don't even know it. This place is dead anyway. Always double down on 11. And also a great speech from Trent when he tells Mike to not be the guy from the PG-13 movie, but the, guy, but the one from the rated R movie. Um, some clever and tongue-in-cheek references to other movies. Like one of the um the Las Vegas waitresses dressing up like uh, Judy Garland as Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. A recreation of the scene in Goodfellas where uh, Henry Hill goes into the basement of a club. Uh, and especially a recreation of the iconic shot 
in Reservoir Dogs, where Michael Madsen, Tim Roth, Harvey Keitel and co, you know, walk down the street in slow motion, which I loved. And, and some classic scenes, like the big dance number towards the end when Mike dances with Heather Graham's character, which was brilliant. The golf club scene, the blackjack scene, the scene where everyone plays an ice hockey video game together. Um, the conversation between Rob, Ron Livingston's character, and Mike in Mike's apartment. And especially the scene where Mike constantly attempts to call his ex using an answering machine, which is one of the funniest scenes in the movie, but at the same time just emotionally painful to watch. Um, now, despite it clocking in at over at just over 90 minutes, I felt like the film was shorter than that, as if I was watching it for a full hour because of how quickly paced this thing was. The editing and cinematography are not really some of the best I've seen, but, you know, all that doesn't matter because they really add to the charm factor of this movie. Now, the soundtrack, especially featuring a performance from the swing band known as at the time, known as Big Bad Voodoo Daddy, I thought was fantastic. Doug Lyman's direction, it's decent at best, but nothing really quite extraordinary, in my honest opinion. Um, the supporting actors, including Ron Livingston and Heather Graham, do, do such good jobs with their roles. Um, some people would argue that Jon Favreau, you know, moped a lot throughout the movie and was almost like a whiny and annoying version of Woody Allen's character from Annie Hall, which he kind of was, I have to admit, but at least he was likeable, and I thought he did a great job. But, and I never thought I would say this, the true scene stealer and the person with some of the best lines in this movie is none other than Mr. Vince Vaughton himself. Now, the guy now the guy has never really, you know, impressed me with most of his you know, with most of his more recent movies, you know, like the two movies I had already reviewed um, on the channel prior to this, which, uh, which of course, were uh, Fred Claus and Four Christmases, both of which were shit. And the last... and. And the last movie of his I could I could honestly remember seeing was The Delivery Man, which which wasn't as bad as the um the aforementioned as the two aforementioned Christmas films. You know, while I was on holiday in Croatia last year. In this movie, Vince Vaughn is actually funny. 
which makes it sad, really, that he's never been this funny ever since. And he gives a fantastically over-the-top, scenery-chewing, star-making performance as the completely self-absorbed, misogynistic dick who you'd want to punch in the face, almost a little bit like Gaston from Beauty and the Beast, but tamer, but is also the best friend that you cannot help but want to keep you company, and you'd have to tolerate all the shit that he's doing, all the bullshit that he's doing around the opposite sex. Um, also, the chemistry between him and Favreau is very enjoyable to watch on screen. Now, the payoff, r the payoff right at the end, where, where spoiler alert, Trent thinks that this random woman is making baby faces at him in a diner and he prepares to flirt with her only for it to turn out that she was making baby faces to her actual baby who was sitting across the table from her causing Trent to feel embarrassed whilst Mike ends up with a satisfied look on his face I thought I thought it was that was p a perfect way to end the mo uh, a hilarious and perfect way to end the movie. Mm. Now, I know that this film will not be for everyone, but if you are a film buff or want to see John Favreau and Vince Vaughn having a good time on screen, I would highly recommend that you go and check out Swingers. And in conclusion, my overall rating for Swingers is going to be a high 8 uh, is going to be a high 8 out of 10. Now, feel free to leave a comment in the section below and not only let me know your thoughts on swingers, but also let me know what your favourite and or least favourite Vince Vaughton movie is. Uh, plus, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Also, if you haven't already, please feel free to leave any question you want to ask me for my upcoming Q&A session on... Um, for my upcoming Q&A session next Sunday, which will also be my 23rd birthday in the comments section of my last video, which was my live reaction to last week's BAFTA Television Awards. And until my next video, which, surprise, surprise, is going to be a long overdue special reaction video to Epic Who and Who Addicts Reviews episode commentary on the wedding of River Song. <laughs> Do take care, everyone. And Vegas, baby, Vegas!